this is the crest of Hartlepool Town and it shows a stag being chased by probably some kind of uh, hunting dog. This area signifies the swampy area. Hartlepool was known as a stag breeding ground and hunting grounds in the early early times, hence the reason why the stag and the hunting hound is in the same picture. So I'm now at the St Paris Church of St Hilda, which has been here since, as you can see, 16, well, 649 actually, so longer than I expected. And this beautiful church has all been renovated within the last 10 years. Church unfortunately is closed at the time being because of uh, Covid and the lockdown. But having been inside uh, last year for the first time, I was very impressed by it. Very beautiful church. Here I'm at, at the town walls of Hartlepool, East Hartlepool, which is the docks area and the very end to the sea. And this wall was built in the 1300s to protect the fishing rights and from entry from the marauding Scots coming over and down from the border. So this town was uh, under siege for a long time by the Scottish and in fact some of the streets in the town named after Sir Robert the Bruce and Bruce Crescent is one of the main streets in this area of the town. This wall when it was finished was uh, two meters wide and up to six meters high and it covered the whole of the town. This area was all sealed off uh, with a gate at the end called North Gate. Well, I'll, I'm at Hartlepool Boxing Club, which was, I think, it was signed just established in 1985. More recently, the uh, club's uh, played host to Savannah from Hartlepool, so she's uh, became a very famous uh, talented boxer at the Olympics and professionally now. And in the past, Hartlepool's got a long history of boxing, including the Feeney brothers and um, the long history of um, the East End producing some really top quality fighters who have gone on the national stage. Well, I'm at Hartlepool United Football Club. Um, just a few things about Hartlepool United Football Club. It was started in 1908 and believe it or not, did start as a football club. The ground itself was a rugby ground and the ground was owned by West Hartlepool and they come up uh, in the difference in the 1990s and eventually folded and the ground then became the football ground we know today. It's called Victoria Park and it's named after Queen Victoria as you can guess and the club's had a hundred year anniversary and as it hasn't won anything of note over the years it's it punched above its weight for many many years and it was in League One, League Two, it's now in the National League North and uh, doing quite well and its famous movie was Jeff Stelling um, who is one of the joint owners of the club with Raj Singh and hopefully it will continue onwards and upwards. Um, interesting teenery wall here for any Poolies out there. I'm a football fan and a Poolies fan. There's quite a few names there. So behind me is Sir William Gray, as uh, some may know he was the first and second mayor of Hartlepool and he lived very close to here which is on Church Street, top of Church Street and as the mayor he was responsible for putting into action plans to expand what is West Hartlepool and eventually joined East Hartlepool in 1976 to become Hartlepool rather than Hartlepools which was two separate authorities. So you can see in his hand, his right hand, he has some plans in his hand. This was a recognition of his uh, development of the area, Church Street, and uh, many, many fine buildings in this area. This is a photograph of Ralph Ward Jackson, who died in 1880. He was known as the founding father of Hartlepool, having started the Hartlepool and Stockton Company in the 1860s, which transported from the docks he constructed um, all the way to Holland and Europe, uh, the coal boom of the 1800s, and that basically made his fortune. Um, he was a Conservative MP for Hartlepool as well. He died penniless, 
because of legal action, but he um, had many things to honour in the town. Behind me is Church Street, which um, is also the unlikely setting of uh, a very famous film director's career. The film director is Ridley Scott, who trained at the Hartlepool Arts Studios, which still exists today. And the film is called The Boy and the Bicycle, so all those who like action films such as Alien and Black Hawk Down, so the movie he did, um, they find it strange he began his career and his first short movie was The Boy and the Bicycle in Church Street Harlem. So behind me stands the house of John Darwin, who was living in that house and in 2002 decided to go to somewhere out there in his canoe, which is St. Canoe Beach area, and stage his own disappearance, which was um, quite a feat considering he had two sons and his wife lived in there for five years from 2002 to 2007, when he mysteriously turned up been, it turns out, subsequently to have been in Panama and various other places to evade and cash the insurance and um, yeah, they made the film out of it, a documentary out of it and that was the scene of the... There you have it, the proof that Hangus the Monkey, who was the mascot for Hartlepool United, became the mayor of Hartlepool and was the man who opened this flood and coast protection scheme. Well done, it's a good thing. This is Carl, remember us Carl? The worst shit sea going guys ever. Right now I'm on the site of the famous Hartfield monkey. The story goes at the 1700s when the French, who were one of many to attack the town, there was a stranded ship out there and the locals of Hartlepool found it. It was a thought it was a monkey or a man, it looked like a monkey, hung it. And then the story goes, that's where I'll get the term monkey hangers from. I was very proud of it. And the evening I said before, they uh, enlisted the mayor was a monkey and didn't hang us on the local football ground. And there we have it, a hard to monkey. If I throw a penny in, apparently it makes uh, good luck for the year. Which I do nearly every time I come in and it doesn't change my luck, but I try again in a second. There we go, a hardly to monkey. So here I'm at the Royal Navy Museum of Hartlepool, which is on the Jackson Wharf landing, which is um, part of the £250 million pound regeneration scheme which was launched in the 1990s under uh, the time of Peter Manderson and such like and it's quite impressive actually inside you've got the history of Hartlepool shipping and the Trivacoli which is the oldest surviving ship of what we would say the 16th, 1700s under sail it's quite and uh, the Wingfield Castle, the oldest steam paddle ship in the world apparently. So, that's it, Hartlepool Jackson's Landing, named after the famous son, Ralph Ward Jackson, his name's everywhere. Hi there, so now I'm at Rover's Rugby Club. As you can see, it started in 1879, and it was the scene of the very first Barbarians touring team in, on the 27th of December 1890, where the Barbarians won nine. Four, really strong. Someone make a record in that. It's 
to the Barbarian very first match was actually here and in the clubhouse. So that they were nice. There is the original strip of one of the players with the glass case in the clubhouse. Those of you who know, this is Andy Cap, made famous by the Hartlepool illustrator Reg Smythe, who wrote the Daily Mirror, I think, for 30 or 40, or even 50 years. The story of Andy and his uh, long suffering wife, Flo. I don't know about use a lot, but when I hear the sea, it's probably the most relaxing thing. Uh, sound of nature. Now I'm at the Hoff Battery Memorial where it says 160 people died on the bombardment of 16th of December, First World War. And I think it was 1917 was that, and all 500 civilians were injured in the process. They built this memorial some years after, a long time after, I believe. But it's uh, quite a thing to think that not long ago, the French and the Germans were out there from the 1700s attacking the northeast. In the 1900s and the war, First World War, especially. Some people say the damage to Hartlepool improved the place, but that's not really fair. It's too bad, as you can see from this short video of it. So, this board shows some of the German crews that were involved in the bombardment of Hartlepool. And if I was just reading one, it says SMS Blutcher from the Hartlepool raid hit six times by the cannons from here. And in 1915 the Blucher sank after an engagement in Dogger Bank, which again is not too far away from here, so it's quite incredible that not that long ago, 100 years, they were out there on the North Sea coming for us. Hartlepool Golf Course, the scene of many disasters, and high scores, and wasted green fees, but that's what it's all about, isn't it? Fill in the days. And, uh, just in the foreground there, you can see Crimden Dean Caravan Park in Crimden Dean Beach. So this area here is part of the nature reserve and it's a recovery area for little turns. So apparently if you see a little turn around here, then you've got to leave it well alone. Can't see any little turns around here. Plenty of dogs and people. And this spring Sunday. Well, that's it, Carrera Crossfire tour of East Hartlepool and Hartlepool Dock and Beachlands is over. Glorious day, probably one of the best first days of spring after uh, two months of lockdown, it seems like. It's a pretty uh, mean, uh, mean way for this. That's, that's it, it's me over and out. Enjoy the rest of your day, and if anyone who did watch this, I'd be absolutely amazed. But if you subscribe, press the like button, that would be very much appreciated. And uh, as I said, keep exploring, keep checking everyone's uh, YouTube's out, and get some information for your own travels.